Hello everybody, I'm Mark from Overland and Forward and welcome back to the channel. I'm in a very small town called Hanko, which is on the southwestern corner of the Finnish coast. And I managed to find this area which is sort of designated as not only a wild camping area, but also out in front of me are some caravans, mobile homes, van lifers, further down towards the coast. There's also some fixed caravans down there as well, which clearly have just been, they've got decks built around them. But about 100 meters that way is the coast and it's a gorgeous coastline it's quite sheltered but it's a great place to come here and just sort of chill like i said i'm in the wild camping area so i rocked up here friday afternoon close to six o'clock it's only an hour or so from helsinki and because we pretty much have got 22 hours worth of daylight at this point in time in finland you could easily set your tents up and people were rocking up here at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock last night and it was still light out. So I have been itching to do this review for probably about three months. So I got this tent, which is a Jake Lau Jacot 210, probably in March. And I've been eager to test it out, but clearly with the L322 going through its engine woes, I haven't really had time to go test it. And on my travels, I've been to Germany when I went to the German Land Rover Club a couple of weeks back. And I've also done some wild camping here in Finland over the last couple of weekends. So I think I've now, tonight will be night number 16 in this tent. So I think I've got a pretty good idea of what this thing is like. So a couple of things about Jake Lau. And you can see here it's plastered with his name. So Jake Lau is sort of legendary in the tent world. I didn't know much about him, to be honest with you. I'm a big fan of the Helinox products because they're extremely comfortable. I've got a table, I've got the cot, I've got a chair. They're lightweight, they're compact. Now they are on the expensive side, but I always believe that you pay for good quality stuff and this is top, top quality. Now when Jake Lau created Helinox, a lot of people sort of say, well, where does the name come from? So Helinox is the combination of two words. Helios, which is the god of sun, and Nox, which is the goddess of night. And there you go. That's how the name Helinox came to be. Now with top quality gear comes the price tag with it. And this is no exception. So with the cot underneath here on the tent and the tent itself, that's a pricey combination to have a single person cot with a tent on top of it. It's not cheap. But as I mentioned before, I think this is well worth the investment. I honestly believe I am going to get years out of this tent. This is going to be with me for at least five to ten years, and I seriously doubt anything is going to go wrong with it in that period of time. In the short time I've owned it and been in it and slept in it, it's been excellent. Now the Jacot 210, which is this tent, is 210 centimeters long. You can also get them in the 190 centimeters, so it will be the Jacot 190. The reason why they are named that way is because the Helinox cot, which is designed to fit on, come in two sizes. And you guessed it, the large one, which is the Helinox cot max, which is the one I've got, is 210 centimeters. And then all of the other cot ranges that they do are 190 centimeters. So if you want one of these and you're fairly small in stature, then you probably only need the 190. So you would need a J cot 190. Now, as I said, I'm coming up to this, tonight will be 16 nights in this tent. And I feel now I can give you my honest feedback of what I think about this tent. 
So the tent itself weighs in about two kilograms and it's packed into a 55 centimeter by 16 centimeter bag. And yes, the bag is the same color as the tent, but it will pack up into this bag quite comfortably and quite easily. And like a lot of products you have today, the cool thing is they've got a flap at the end. So when you want to get the tent out, you grab hold of one end, pull the tent and out it comes. So this tent is extremely versatile. It's also functional as well. But versatility comes in as if you don't want to carry a cot, this will go dire directly on the ground. So it's got a built-in ground sheet. It looks like it's pretty comfortable, but you would have to put something down underneath it, a mattress or some sort of barrier underneath to sleep on it, unless you were really sort of wanting to sleep on a soft piece of the ground that you could find. So this tent could be used if you want to go hiking with it, if you want to go cycling with it, and you could definitely go motorcycling traveling with it as well. Last night there was a German guy who was sort of camped over there in a fairly decent sized one-man tent came over and said what is that and I showed him what it was and he just said that is smaller and lighter than the tent he's been lugging around on the back of his motorcycle. So clearly this could be used for other types of travel and like you know the overlanding that I do. Now this tent is made in South Korea it's made from really high quality material there's like three layers of material in the tent itself. It is breathable, um, but it also has got this barrier in there where any sort of moisture inside will evaporate through the tent, but the barrier will also stop any moisture coming in. So if you get hammered down with rain, not that I've tried it, it's supposed to keep you bone dry inside. It could be a good test at some point in time to take my tarp down and get in the tent to see what it's like. Now the Helinox Cot max which is underneath here is 210 in length and 77 wide the tent itself is 210 but it's 75 wide so it just fits in the form factor of the cop so for me i'm close to 63 i need 210 i cannot get into a 190 cot and i definitely could not get into a 190 version of this it will be way too small and way too tight for me to get in there properly and comfortably now i can put this up the cot and the tent and get all my sleeping gear inside in five minutes. I've timed it without really rushing. I could probably get, I don't know, 30 seconds a minute off of that as well. So with my old rooftop tent, and I know a lot of people are saying, why the heck did you ditch it? Well, I actually prefer this setup. I like the fact that I've got a tarp. Now the tarp itself takes a long time to set up and we're talking 10 minutes, but this to me is a better setup for me and a better option for me going forward. So let's have a look how easy it is to set up. So this is the Helinox Cot Max Convertible Cot. So this is real simple to set up. The cot's rolled out. You have the legs and then you have two of these really light aluminium poles that go down the side of each side of the cot. So let's put it together. So setting up the cot is really easy. You unfold it and then just lay it on the ground. And there are two side poles. You can see I've already put one in here and that goes the length of the cot. It's shock corded. So on the end of the cot, there is this tab. And all you do is you take the pole and you feed it through the length of the cot and when you get to the end you pull the tab over the top of the pole and so both ends of the poles the tabs are over the top fold the cot over and then lay the feet so it comes with four feet for the 210 but on the 190 there are only three feet now the feet themselves, and I put this one in, have this clip. So to tension them, you put this piece into the bottom of where the cutout is for the, for the foot, and then push on this until it clicks. Now there is quite a bit of tension, and you'll hear it click. Now what I found the best way to do with the t putting this up is if you start in the middle and then work your way 
to the ends and then that evens out the tension on the fabric as you push in and click in the feet. So again, that opening fits in, put it down, give it a bit of push and it's in. And that is the four bases or feet in. Now you can stop here because on the bottom of all of these you'll see there's these rubber feet. So if you turn them, turn this over, you will sit at the standard height for the cot. Which is, I think, 17 centimetres from the floor to the top of the cot. But we're not going to stop there. So these are the leg extensions, the cot extensions. For any of the cots that you have, I think they fit in the 190 versions, all the different 190 versions that they have. And it says here what the compatible models are. It's the COT1 convertible, the COT home convertible, the tactical COT, and then the COT max. And as I mentioned before, the COT max, which is this one, which is the 210, has four of these bases or these feet. So that's why you need 16. And these are real simple. Take the foot, push. We'll take the foot, push. And that is the cot with all of the 16 leg extensions in. So let's just flip the cot over. And there is the assembled cot up on the feet, on the extension feet, which pushes this from the ground to the bottom of the cot at about 38 centimeters. Okay, let's put the tent on. So these tents are made to fit on the Helinox cots. And at the bottom of the one end, you'll find these flaps. There's one on this side, one on that side. And what you do with the flap, take the flap, and then you hide it up under here. Take the second one and then pull it. Now what this does is this stops the tent shifting when you move around on the cot at night. So on the other end of the tent there are pockets but they have zippers and you can see there the zippers are quite big. So what you then do, and this is going to be really difficult to do with one hand, is you line this up and then you pull it down and then zip. And if I flip the tent over, you can see how the pocket there is zipped into place. And that's the same down there on the other side. And that is it. That's the tent connected to the cot. So let's put the pole up. So it's one continuous shock corded pole, really lightweight. But it takes some doing to be able to get this pole in place. And I'll show you how it looks. You take the bottom of this here and fit it into these feet. And it's best to do one end first, and then the other, then the flap, the vent flap, and then work your way down to the other side. And then I'll show you how I put it all together. And then I go down to the other end and do exactly the same thing. Now in the center of the tent, there is this little foot. And as you can see, it's a slide foot connector. And that goes into here. Put the tent up and clip it in place. And the vents are either side. Should be able to reach over, grab it. And the tent. And then all you do is go around with these clips. I'm not sure how many there are. They're about two each end on the top. Clip them in. Down the sides, two of them. So 
So both sides open up. There's really a lot of generous space to get in. There are tabs to be able to take the first storm door. There is mesh all the way through here. There is massive amounts of ventilation because both sides open up. There are vents in the top, both sides. And there are vents here at the back, both at the head end or the foot end or whichever way you go. Now, as I mentioned before, this tent can be used without the cot. And so there are guide ropes on either end of the tent if you need to peg it down. So what I normally do with this, I just loop these around the feet and then just tie them up. So you end up with the guide ropes just around the back of the tent down here underneath the feet and I just cinch these. The reason why is that sometimes with my pillow on the other end it pushes up against here just the way I sleep and I found that this stops the tent sort of bulging out but you don't need to do this they're not really needed for that I just chose to do that. So the zips are YKK they're really smooth and as you can see in the tent there is a lot of space. Now I guess it's all relative a lot of space for a single man tent but there's plenty of space in here. There are pockets at either end and they're pretty generous you can put keys phones watches whatever it is you need to put in there. There are three loops and these are all double stitched and double seamed into what the roof. I've got a claymore light and I hang the claymore light off the top. They're all as I said they're all double seamed and double stitched all the way through they're all taped and if you look inside the tent you can clearly see here how everything is seam sealed all the way through even where the joins are this is really really well made if you don't have a cot again the floor this is a rubberized it's not the same material but the ground sheet again is seam sealed and you can see here it is double stitched and seam sealed right the way throughout the tent now a lot of tents don't have a generous enough flap where the zip is but as you can see here this one has got a big overlap so no water is going to get in through here when it's all sealed up it's very very generous you're looking at about at least an inch or more than that all the way through and all the way down and again double stitched and all seamed so with all my gear inside I know I've got an XP mattress this is a 190 I think it's at the bottom yep so this is not fully inflated but you can see the difference there between the, the end of a 190 mattress to the end of the tent 20 centimeters and I have two pillows one that I put in here and another one over the top and then when it gets chilly I just got a down blanket that I put over the top as well So that is the Jake Lau Jcot 210 sitting on the Helinox Cot Max. Total put it up, the cot itself, a couple of minutes, the tent itself without having to film, you're probably looking two to three minutes. It really is pretty straightforward. It's very, very well built. It's an excellent tent. So that's the tent. So let's talk about my experiences in the tent. First of all, it's 10 out of 10. I can't find at this point in time after spending 15 nights in it anything wrong with it at all. It's easy to set up. It's extremely lightweight. It compacts down to be stored away either in one of my boxes on the roof or down the side of my load space. 
This color may not be to your choice, but it comes in five different colors. There's a camo version. There's a green gray version. You can get it in sort of darker colors. But to me, I actually like this. This is the one that I ordered. Um, it is yellow. It's very yellow. Um, and it does let the light in. So I would imagine if you're one of these people that get woken up very, very early when the sun comes up and clearly 22 hours of daylight here, it does come up around three o'clock in the morning or 2.30. Surprisingly, there's not a lot of light bleed come through when you're in the tent. I've not been woken up in the nights I've been in it with the light coming through the tent. So that's something to consider. If you are interested in one of these and you do suffer from, you know, the light coming into a tent, my recommendation would be get a darker color. Now let's talk about price. Quali with quality comes a cost. Now I paid just over 400 pounds for this tent. Um, it wasn't easy to get. And here's one of the cons with the whole buying experience. Jake Lau owns Helinox. This tent is designed to go on a Helinox cot, but you cannot buy this tent on Helinox.com. I don't know why. Someone will be able to comment below and tell me why. So you have to directly go to Jake Lau's website in South Korea. Now, luckily enough for me, we have somebody in the office who comes from South Korea. And I got her to reach out to them and say, hey, I've got a guy that I work with wants to buy one of your tents. What can we do? And so we figured out how, how to do it. Basically, I had to transfer the money directly to their bank account and then they shipped it out. So the only con, which has got nothing to do with this tent, is you cannot purchase it through helenox.com and because I don't have an address in Korea, I couldn't purchase it off their website in Korea. So you can buy one, but you have to go to customer support in South Korea for Jake Lau and they will work with you to be able to get you the tent. From when it was shipped to when it arrived, it took nine days. They gave me a tracking number, it came all really nicely packaged up and it came in this bag. So pros and cons. I think I've explained that I love the tent. Now the cons are, you may not like the fact that it takes the time it does to set up. But to me, three minutes I can get this tent up, which is pretty damn quick. And I know you can get pop-up tents that you chuck away and 30 seconds is up. But the quality of those are susceptible sometimes and that is not what I want. The other con that you can think of is price. 400 pounds for a tent for some people would be too much. I'm of the opinion, buy it once, good quality stuff will last a lot longer than buying a tent for half the price that potentially could fall apart. Now, a lot of this is personal, right? Some people would look at this and think that's an absolute waste of money. But I look at this as a quality piece of kit that I will get years of use out of. And we're talking a decade at least. I'm not gonna get any taller. I might get a bit shorter, but I will fit into this tent. Somebody did ask me, at a campsite and said, could you fit two people in there? And I said, well, you could, but you'll have to be very, very friendly and you wouldn't do a lot of moving around. So overall, I give this tent 10 out of 10. It's light, it's compact, it's easy to put up, it's easy to take down. It's a small price to pay for a really good quality tent. So I'm gonna enjoy this gorgeous 28 degree day. I really hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please, don't forget to like the video, share the video with anybody that might be interested and don't forget to click and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well, posting a lot more pictures of me on my travels through the Baltic states. And with that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.